Let's take our Bibles and please stand. Read some verses out of Exodus. We continue our walk in the Ten Commandments. Exodus 20, 1 through 7. Exodus 20, 1 through 7. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I am the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless, but taketh his name in vain. May God bless his word. You may be seated. The title of the message today in our third commandment, God's name handle with care. God's name handle with care. The Supreme Court ruling of 1980 said, it is unlawful to post the Ten Commandments on a wall of any school. Now listen to that decision. If posted, the copies of the Ten Commandments are to have any effect at all, it will be to induce school children to read, meditate upon, and perhaps to obey the commandments. A pastor responded, You cannot display the commandments, such as thou shalt not kill, because everybody might obey it. And every year, killing sprees happen in the schools. God drew a line between right and wrong when he told Moses, come up the Mount Sinai and I will give you two tablets and the Ten Commandments. Here in the Bible, the commandments do not make us sinners. They reveal the fact that we are sinners. You and I, born with a sin nature, You can't escape it, but that's the way it is. From the Garden of Eden to your house and mine, we all have a sin nature. We're separated, disobedient from God, and we become lawbreakers in thought, word, or deed. So the commandments show us and teach us, yes, we're sinners, but we need a Savior. The third commandment. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God's name in vain. But many times we leave out the last part. Do you notice that? For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. That means God is very serious about his name. And I want to show that to you today. Let's examine first of all what's in a name. Names interest me. Donald. The first thing I found, it said Great Chief, and I almost cracked up. Great Chief. Martha was a little bit better. Lady. Because of an Aramaic baby name. I remember there's some strange names. Uh, as I went to college, as I drove toward college, and... Uh, it's been about 15 miles, I guess, from my home and 15 more miles, about halfway to college. The last name, Christmas. Have you ever met a family named Christmas? I had never, never seen that name before. I'm sure you may have in different places, but I thought it was very interesting. In 1941, in the Florida electric chair, these two men were electrocuted. Will Byrne, last name B-U-R-N, 
and Will Frizzle, F-R-I-Z-Z-L-E. That's very, very interesting. The Bible says something that's very important with the Hebrews about a name. It's very important. It carries weight. It stands for the whole person, his character, his qualities. We think of the name of God, Creator. In the beginning, God did what? Created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1.1. He's eternal God, always was, always is, always will be. Lord God, I am that I am. Exodus 3.14, he told Moses to tell the people to go down and get the people out of the land of Egypt and tell Pharaoh who he was. He's a redeemer God. Lord God brought you out of Egypt, showed your mighty miracles. He delivered you, set you free. And so today we thank God that he sent Jesus Christ to be our redeemer. God the Son came, died on a cross so that we could be forgiven, shed his blood that we could be delivered from the penalty and power of sin. So the name is sacred. Uh, there is something very important and highly important about God's name. Secondly, today, how do we take God's name in vain? How do we take it in empty ways, disrespectful and irreverent? Watch these few statements here. You joke about God. You laugh at his name. Do you ever do that? You show unbelief in God's ability is to take his name in vain. To not take his name seriously. The Bible talks a lot about fearing the Lord. When you have holy awe and reverence for God's name, you'll take him seriously. Making a vow or a pledge in God's name, but do not mean it or do it. Repeating Christian expressions without meaning. Using God's name as a curse word or profanity. Blaspheming God. Directing hatred to God. Associating filth with God. His perfect, pure, and holy name. Those are some of the ways we can take his name in vain. Thirdly, we shouldn't take his name in vain, God's name, because he's holy. He's a holy God. Let me turn you for a moment to Psalm 99. Read a few verses here. It's a chapter about the holiness of God. Psalm 99. The Lord reigneth, let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims. Let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion. He's high above all the people. Let them praise thy great and terrible name. Awesome. For it is holy. Verse 5. Exalt ye the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. For he is holy. That's a picture like going to the temple or, or at a throne bowing humbling ourselves before the holy God. We use his name as holy because of his moral perfection. He's separate from all others. No other God besides the Lord. He's one of a kind. He's different. His name is to be treated with the highest reverence and honor because he's a holy, awesome God. And there is no other how do you use his name? Too many trample God's name through the mud today. We talk about profanity, cursing, obscenities. I guess that shows a real lack of vocabulary. The story is told of a man who was wonderfully converted several years ago in Texas. And he said this, when I was converted, I lost half of my vocabulary. It's pretty good, isn't it? If you're here today and you're having problems with uh, profanity, you need to take care of that. That's the Spirit of God to help you, to change you, convict you of that. Profane means pro in front of, and fame is temple. So profane, profanity. What you want to do in front of the temple or the house of God, like we come here to church, you should do that in your daily speech and think about what we say with our language. Look at our society today. Comedy, television, movies, books, 
sports, music, now the internet and the cell phones. More profanity, more ratings, they would say. The greater the audience, more money when you insult people and also God's name. But I warn you, do not use His holy name in vain. I found this story of the farmer. He was late coming home for dinner one night and his wife said, uh, Dear, what, what caused you to be so late? He said, Well, on the way home I picked up the preacher. Now they're traveling the wagon and horses and mules at that time, you know. He said, On the way home I picked up the preacher. From that point on the mule didn't listen to me one time. <laughs> oh, you got the picture, didn't you? He was misusing the name of the Lord. It's a sad thing today, though, that people in their daily talk speak unholy about our Lord. You think of Jesus. Why did Jesus pray in Matthew 6, 9 and following? We call it the Lord's Prayer. We call it the model's prayer of Jesus. What did he say? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It's holy. It's holy. You should not misuse it. If the Savior lifted up the name of God, how much more should we as His people? God takes seriously His name. It's how it's used. So it's guilty. We're guilty when we profane it, swear it, cursing, slinging His name in an unholy vocabulary. So wherever you go, it doesn't matter here in the church house. Somebody says, well, when I come to church, I won't say a bad word. So I walk out the door, I'm... It's open, open field. No. You're just in a different building or a different space where you go to your own house, schoolhouse for young people, college, dormitories, wherever it is. In your workplace. How do you use this name? It's very important. Do not profane the name of the Lord your God. We search out pledges and promises uh, people do not intend to keep the vows they make before God. What about in court? How we misuse this name? Raise your hand, promise to tell the truth, so help you God. Businesses, we promise to God we're going to give our friend the best buy and all along we're, we're charging thousands extra. What about marriage? We seal vows with our rings in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I remember I, I went through the same thing I did most of the time. The great, uh, we're gathered here together in the sight of God in this holy matrimony. And we went through all the vows and so forth. And Well, they split in six weeks. I said, Lord, I must have done a bad, bad job trying to help somebody uh, come to really know who you are. But that was my problem. They knew about a holy God. They chose to go opposite. Baptism. We did our young people here several weeks ago, baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Promise to follow the Lord and use His name wisely. Our Lord Jesus in Matthew 5, I, I won't read that today, but you need to mark that down. Matthew 5, I think Matt has it on the screen here, 33 and following. We're not to use vows or pledges when making a real promise to God. We just need to simply do what we say we're going to do. Let your yes be what? Yes, and you know, be no. So, don't need to make some big deal about it. What you're going to pledge to do for God, you need to do that. If not, you say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Truthfulness is a standard for believers, and so be careful what you pledge and promise. A fifth thing today is, when we use God's name in vain, we seek to exalt self and bring God down. You know what the greatest thing in life you're supposed to do, the chief aim of all mankind, is to glorify God. That means to honor and exalt Him 
above all else. The chief aim of every person, especially those who trust him through his son Jesus. So watch exalting self. Now, we did this several weeks ago when I was doing the Sermon on the Mount series in Matthew chapter 7. I want to go there just for a moment here and show you what happens even for those who think they may be honoring the Lord. They honor him in the wrong way. It's self, self-boasting. 21, Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Now watch what they were saying to Jesus. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? Hey, we've been preaching, Jesus, about the greatness of who you are now and what's going to happen in the future. And in thy name we cast out devils. Hey, we're taking care of demons in the name of Jesus. In your wonderful name. And in thy name we've done many wonderful works. And what did Jesus say? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Those four are the saddest words in the Bible. If you want to mark that. I think we talked about that and we did that sometime back. Matthew 7 and 23. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, dear ones, you use the Lord's name as a means to your own selfish end. You are going to get in deep trouble. Falsely using his great name for self-glory and not the glory of God. You're setting up yourself for a great fall. It's called manipulating the name of the Lord for personal gain, for example. Turn on your television. You hear supposedly a Christian preacher, evangelist, or someone say, All right, you need to send me $100, $500, $1,000. If you don't, we're going off the air. Not suppose I did that next Sunday standing here in this pulpit. Well, I hope somebody gets together in the end and says, well, let's, let's go examine your head. Let's do a special, let's do a special uh, ultrasound on your head. One pastor says he used God's name to intimidate people. As, you know what forgery is, don't you, when you take someone else's name and sign for it and they don't know about it. Now what about spiritual forgery? It's the same way. We better be careful in using God's name. Push selfish agendas. Jesus will say, I never knew you. It doesn't matter if it's pastor, evangelist, church members, music person, young children, people. It doesn't matter who you are. I never knew you is a sad, sad phrase. Destructive. Those who believe they can use faith in Jesus, use his name just to speak certain words, do certain things to manipulate people, intimidate people. That's exalting man and you will fall. I pray to God I never use dictatorship, use exalting self above our great God and his wonderful name. He only, his name is only to be praised and honored above all else. So we need to trust him, obey his word, and show evidence of doing the will of God. Number six today, you can use God's name in vain by the way we live. By the way you live. Let me ask you, what kind of representative are you for the Lord? You're going to be some kind of representative. You're representing Jesus right now. Somebody say, well, sometimes I'm good, sometimes I'm bad. Representative, sometimes I'm in the middle. We need to seek the Lord daily and ask Him. Lord, let me not be a bad representative of Your name. 2 Timothy 2.19 The Lord knoweth them that are His. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ 
Depart from iniquity. Dear friends, today, if you are continually, habitually living in sin, I'm talking about living separated from God, disobedient to God, I pray that you will examine your faith. It doesn't matter you came to Jesus at 8 years old, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50. I'm not talking about the year you said, I trusted Jesus or said a sentence of faith. Examine yourself. Depart from iniquity. We bring much dishonor to our Lord's name when we misrepresent Him. The plain truth is called hypocrisy. We really are play acting. That's what a hypocrite is. It's like a play actor. They put on a face or they put on a certain cast, uh, certain robes or whatever they're doing, and they make themselves into another person. Hypocrisy. You say you're a believer in Jesus. But then we need to act like we're believers in Jesus. You say we love Christ, we need to live for Christ and trust Him. Sometimes we're sending bad, mixed up signals to others. Lift up Christ in our talk, bring down His name in our walk. One pastor wrote, he said, the greatest hindrance to lost people being saved not that they don't understand the gospel when you share it to, for them. They hear it. They've heard of Jesus, many. They understand the greatness of Jesus, what He did at the cross, and the resurrection. They see their sin, but they don't understand people who claim to be Christians and live like they do. You ever met people like that? We have to turn them to Jesus and say, we're sorry, or I'm sorry. If you've seen me fail, or I said something wrong to you, I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? But you need to turn to Jesus. He's the perfect one. And He takes our imperfection. He nailed it to the cross. He took your place and took mine. To help us make God's name honorable, just be careful how you live. You know the great hymn says, let others see Jesus in you, don't you? Many of you know that. Your life's a book before their eyes. They're reading it through and through. Say, does it point them to the skies? Do others see Jesus in you and me? Now that's a real question, isn't it? Do you think about it? We all need to do some real soul searching there, don't we? Another thing today, a seventh statement is this. If we're going to bring honor to God's name. It's by trusting and obeying Him. Trust and obey. Psalmist David had a hard struggle with his enemies in Psalm chapter 9. You can read about it there. He knew he was a great, all-powerful God. He was his refuge. And he says in Psalm 9, in verse 10, listen to these words. And they that know thy name, your name, O Lord God, your name, will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. The apostles and first disciples, Peter and John, you know, would be put in prison there in Acts chapter 4 in that early church. They got out. In Acts 4.12 it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's the name of Jesus. Then Philippians chapter 2. Hear these great words. 9 through 10. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him. That's Jesus. Given him a name, 
which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Have you done that? And how's the greatest way to honor His name? Yes, we confess Him. We trust Him. But He wants you to follow Him. Trust Him as the Savior died for your sins, rose again. He lives. He wants you to follow Him as Lord. That makes all the difference. Confess Him. Follow Him as Lord of your life. Well, I don't know about your name. I know what you think about your name. Some people like their names. Some people don't like their names. Some people have changed their names. Way back. Even as young people. But we speak of your name. It's your reputation. Your character. It says something about your influence. As we said for the Hebrews, it carries heavy weight. A solid weight, you might say. In our Lord's name, in the third commandment, he's saying it's very serious. He will not allow his name to be used in vain. In empty, disrespectful ways. He will hold us accountable. You may not see it today. You say, well, I know people who live for uh, 50 years who mocked and cursed and, and said things against the Lord God's name. There will be a day he will, not hold, he will not get away. Must not dishonor his great name. Where do you stand today? You need to ask God to forgive you for dishonoring his name. It begins in the heart of man, our deep will and our desires. Then when He cleanses our heart, changes our mind, what we think, then I think it will come out in your mouth, change your words. But you need to seek the Lord. Are you seeking God through Jesus, His Son? You need to come to Him. Come to the name above all names. Are you convicted of sin? So we need to be convicted. That is called Holy Spirit. He convicts of sin. He brings judgment against sin. He shows us our sin. Convincing us of that. We call to repentance. A turning, a changing of the mind in our life toward God. Turning from sin. Trusting in Christ. That's involved in repentance. True repentance. Repentance is not only saying I'm sorry. Sure. It's a turning of your mind and heart and placing faith in Jesus Christ alone. You need to come into His church, be a part of His church family. Say, I want to serve the Lord Jesus through this family, Christian family called Skyline Heights Baptist Church. Maybe you need to come for prayer. Things upon your heart you need to pour out to God. Or just right where you are. You seek the Lord. If you need to come to Jesus today, would you come?